Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm In Kang Jo. I'm from CODIT, uh, Korea Gar Credit Guarantee Fund. And first of all, I'd like to extend my special thanks, uh, Ms. Ibrahimova, for inviting me this precious session, and also Tamu for uh, their kind uh, invitation. Uh, actually, I, I'd like to start my uh, presentation about Korean economy and some role of our small and medium industries, and then my fund, my, my CODIS role in how promoting Korea's uh, uh, rapid economic growth. But this is a little different from uh, our, our original story about uh, large firms like Samsung and Hyundai Dell. But we know that in behind that kind of large corporation, there are so many small companies which is quite successful, and then they maintain almost to, uh, 80, not, almost 90 percent of our, our hiring employment. So I want to say about the real small and medium industries history of our Korean economy. Let me start uh, with, uh, actually I had a almost 30 minutes uh, presentation, but uh, this is only 10 minutes, so I, I should be very rapid. I skip yeah, this one. Actually, you know that uh, Korean economic growth uh, we started in 1953 at only $67. Now it's 26,000. It's almost 400 times. But it's not easy way because in the during the crisis period, our large, 30 largest jobs among them, 25 go bankrupt, went bankrupt, and then we have a four major bank closed. So it is a really serious uh, reform, and then. After that Asian crisis, our economy is getting better. And then, of course, that kind of recovering uh, factor, uh, uh, and then the small and medium industry did a lot to making that kind of quite rapidly uh, of our economy. This is the sh uh, chart, uh, some statistics about the small and medium industries. Actually, the no, number of enterprise, 99% is the small and medium industries. We have 3.2 million small and medium industries in Korea. And then they hiring 88% of our total employment, which means 12 million. And if they have a three families, 36 million rely on small and medium industries. It's almost 70% of our total population. And then they export about 70% of our export. and then. Their GDP is almost 50, half of a GDP produced by our small and medium industry. So we are now 26,000. But without the successful uh, re recovery or growth of the small and medium industry, uh, current our economic uh, situation is, will be impossible. So with that in mind, uh, I try to say about so what is the major bottleneck for our small in industries? First, in globally or uniformly, commonly, the most difficult impediment for small and medium industry is money. So every time you meet a com commercial bank or some institutional uh, financial institutions, you face that no. Because you don't have any uh, co collateral, you have a very obsolete factories, your credit rating is so bad. So it is usually, even in Korea or Kazakhstan, US, all the small and medium is face the same cold response. So we invented very special devices, CODIT, like a demo of Kazakhstan. So CODIT has break that kind of impediment policy for small and medium industries. Now, I, I'd like to sh show some of our CODIT. Actually, it was established in 1976. And then our total working capital is 5.6 billion US dollar. And then our current outstanding guarantee is 44 billion US dollar. We have a 20,000, uh, 2,000, 2,000 employees, which means each staff has 100 clients, company, and then they handle the 25 million US dollar guarantee. This is a huge one. And after that, please look at the year, 1975. That was just before we established CODIT. There, there should be a, there is a co corporate lending. Among them, 
30, only 35% go to the small and medium industries. 64% goes to the large industries, which is quite uh, lean toward uh, large, and large corporation. But now, please look at 74% of our total loan goes to the small and medium industry by the help of a codit. So it is huge money going to go to the small and medium industry rather than the large corporation. And also, uh, the establishment codit helped to mitigate that kind of uh, uh, global crisis. During the crisis period, we have, uh, as the previous session, the Turkish counterpart said, we have uh, expanded our guarantee, so successfully uh, recovering from the global crisis. And please look at that. Uh, our delinquent rate is quite uh, constant, which means, despite of expanding our guarantee, we secure the soundness of our institution, which means we protect our taxpayers' money. And then secondly, we use the money wisely to select the best and healthy small and medium industries. So that is the pre past and present of our COVID and then uh, small and medium industries in Korea. Now, next. I'd, I'd like to move to the future of uh, Korea's small and medium industries and our, our law. Our Madam President Park, she said that Korean economy has to move from an industrial economy focusing on labor and capital input, now move toward the creative in industries based on innovative techniques and brilliant ideas, which means we used to be a fast follower, following the US, following the German, following the Japan, but from now on, it is impossible because it's already uh, $30 per capita GDP country. So we need a first mover, quick and fast, and then we need the creativity. And in a uh, creative economy, failure is a defeat we used to, because there is a huge competition among the large companies like uh, but in the, creative economy, failure is the basis for innovation, and then we can sh use the restart. So, based on that kind of uh, creative economy, small and medium industry is the best one to rely on. Because large company used, when the large company bankrupt, there is a huge things about labor, labor disputes, and then we need a restructuring money. But small and medium industry are, are very innovative. They have a, uh, 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 good ideas and creative ideas, they can unleash, they can ta tackle the new uncharted territories and new markets. So the, our small and medium industry moving toward a creative economy. So in, a, in, co in, a, in accordance with that kind of movement from the small and medium industries, our codit is also moving. Uh, our, we are diversifying from our plain vanilla uh, uh, guarantees to or the M&A guarantee, start, restart up guarantee. So we are diversify our commodities to help different needs of our future small and medium industries. And especially, we know that Germany is, Germany is the one of the competitive country because of a hidden champion. Hidden champion is small and medium industries. So we also designated small and medium industries and then we try to help them to uh, work as a global contender. So, uh, CODIT want to be a some kind of uh, comprehensive supporter for the small and medium industry, not just for the guarantee. We want to have consulting, create guarantee, and some kind of management research. So, this is the, our goal to help uh, small and medium industry in the total service. So. Now I try to move to for some implication of our past experience and also future uh, trend. Yeah, the situation of small and medium industry is quite similar to Kazakhstan and Korea. They are number of uh, small and medium industry almost similar, but the employing contribution is very low, which means you have a further uh, room to success. So I, I, I'd like to give some implication for the uh, Kazakhstan industries, how to improve more uh, your labor market. So 
as uh, previous speakers, what it need in Kazakhstan is uh, small and medium is entrepreneurship, creativity, and challenging spirit. Yeah. First one is entrepreneurship. Uh, we usually we found that that seventy percent of uh, our entrepreneur coming from other companies. So please expand people's experience in some company. Whether it is a foreign or domestic or whatever countries you have. Secondly, I would like to give you some chance for partnership between academic and enterprise. So that kind of partnership between the academic universities and business sectors will be crucial to help the making entrepreneurship possible. Secondly, I'd like to uh, suggest a technology development. Korea, currently, the ratio of R&D to the GDP is almost 5%. It's number one in the world. Actually, we start very, very med mediocre. Our R&D to GDP was only 0.2% or so, but uh, now it's around 4%, 5%. So, uh, I, I think it's crucial to increase R&D investment from uh, Kazakhstan economy. But in the initial stage, it is very difficult to increase R&D uh, suddenly. So I think it, uh, the govern Kazakhstan government role is quite crucial in, in increasing that kind of R&D activities in this area. Thirdly, as a previous speakers, incubating and administration and then uh, doing business easier is uh, quite uh, important issue for challenging uh, for young young stars to challenge to making business possible lastly i think it, innovation and technology is quite important uh, working skills is quite important and patent is quite important for and, and education is quite important as i told before and lastly i think that uh, for the foreign students uh, the korean students uh, if i take uh, some statistics about the Korean students. In United States, Korea student in studying in United States is number three. Num number one is China, Chinese people. Second is India. Third is the Korean. But just compare the population of China and India. Korea is the, one of the largest uh, students in studying abroad. And in Japan, Korea is the number two, next to the China. In China, Korea is the number one foreign student in China. So I think it, that kind of uh, uh, study abroad is, will help to upgrade uh, the entrepreneurship and innovation. Lastly, we have a very good uh, co cooperation with the Tamu and Korean Codit. And we started uh, MOU in 19, 2011, and then we sharing our knowledge, and then we have a changing our partners. Thank you for your listening. Thank you. У Инга Кранчо на самом деле очень интересная презентация, но учитывая, что она, наверное, более полезна именно для сотрудников фонда Дому, мы приняли решение, что завтра, послезавтра, в зависимости от графика, мы проведем семинар в Алматы для своих сотрудников, где он сможет свою получасовую презентацию блестяще рассказать для наших ребят, которые сейчас занимаются развитием гарантирования. Один из вопросов, который я хотела бы задать господину Инкам Чоу, мы сейчас работаем над, таким, над, над так называемой экспресс-гарантией для начинающих предпринимателей. Она достаточно рискованная. 30% от э, суммы кредита в виде взноса первоначального делает начинающий предприниматель сам. Четыре банка уже активно работают в этом направлении, достаточно крупные, которые где-то, я думаю, 60% банковского сектора занимают. Это банк Центр Кредит, Халык Банк, Сбербанк, Евразийский банк. И 70% выдает необеспеченную гарантию фонд ДОМУ. Но прежде всего мы ориентируемся на рентабельность проекта, мы смотрим на бизнес-план, на то, чтобы проект в будущем мог генерить большие доходы. Но при этом мы финансируем фактически стартап, который не имеет сейчас текущих доходов и не имеет доходов в прошлом. 
Скажите, пожалуйста, в Корее, когда идет отбор предпринимателя для того, чтобы дать ему гарантию, выбирается, какой показатель является самым главным? Сегодня на первой секции много говорили о социальном бизнесе. Я думаю, что социальный бизнес, как правило, он все-таки мало рентабельный. Вот насколько показатели рентабельности важны и как они потом отражаются, особенно для начинающих предпринимателей, и как эта будущая рентабельность, которая только на бумаге есть, как она оценивается в кодите? enterprise to count on that uh, in our uh, system. It's, it is quite interesting, but it's a little difficult situation Be because we have a quite a division of labor about we are handling a little larger one because the, the, we have a very local uh, guarantee scheme. Each, for example, Seoul, Busan and they, they have a regional uh, uh, guarantee fund. So they handle the most of the social, for example, restaurant or some kind of small and really small business, one, one ladies or one uh, people's enterprise, they will handle that kind of issue. So we are relatively la large one compared, for example, they have a The basic capital is a little more than uh, 200,000 200, US dollars or something. So it's a little, uh, so we have uh, some division of labor between the government and, and secondly, uh, we have a credit rating is quite important because the, and then secondly, we should go to the visit very site of the factory and then we confirm the owner of the company, which is the crucial thing. Uh, because we, are, we, we, we don't have any collateral. The people is the collateral. So we should look at the people. The owner has an innovative mind, or the, the people, the owner has a right uh, business plan. So that kind of personal thing is quite important to uh, making, giving guarantee to the people. Thank you. Thank you. I really liked uh, the phrase that the uh, people are the collateral in business. Well, in, in fact, our entrepreneurs in Kazakhstan um, that are part of the roadmap of business in here have a lot of opportunities. First of all, upgrading their competences through uh, exchange of uh, knowledge. And uh, Wendy Harris came from Canada. She is in charge of the uh, Canadian Executive Service Organization, which is the organization putting together um, the pool of experts who come here to Kazakhstan. We call them we'll call them the elderly, uh, with a lot of honor um, being given to them because th they have uh, had their careers built in their specific areas, and they come to Kazakhstan in order to provide consultations here and uh, they live together with our entrepreneurs uh, looking at their businesses and I would like to ask Wendy Miss Harris your organization is active all over the world can you tell us what was interesting for you and your organization in Kazakhstan what do the elderly people from your organization tell about uh, our country and entrepreneurs and what is the experience that is more in use or useful that is the most useful here thank you madam chairwoman um, uh, thank you it's wonderful to be here today and participate in the Astana economic forum um, as I was listening to uh, my colleagues on the first panel uh, I was noticing how often the word mentorship and mentors and sharing of expertise and information was, was brought up as a critical success factor to uh, the small and medium-sized business sector. So really, I'm here to talk about that today, uh, specifically talking about sharing uh, the expertise that has developed in Canada uh, to improve the competitiveness of SMEs here in Kazakhstan. 
so as I'm sure you all know, uh, Canada has a, a vibrant uh, private sector, and so has a lot of experience uh, building the competitiveness of this sector. Um, so this uh, decades of experience provides the opportunity to develop uh, beneficial international partnerships to share uh, our expertise and experience. So we do this through a capacity building model and it's to strengthen business operations uh, globally, as Lizette mentioned. So KESO, Canadian Executive Service Organization, our mission is to enable sustainable economic and social growth by providing highly skilled and experienced um, senior experts in private sector development and institutional strengthening. So you, as you can see from the graphic, uh, the 700 plus um, Kesso has over 700 of these experts, retired and semi-retired experts uh, from the Canadian public and private sector on our roster. So these experts available to deploy around the world to catalyze uh, SME development. On average, our experts have uh, over 30 years of experience in the field in which they're going to participate as a uh, volunteer advisor, we call them, or expert. KESO works uh, with individuals. We also work with communities and institutions. And as again, as you can see from the map, uh, our experience is uh, global. Over our history, we've worked in over 120 countries worldwide uh, with over 425 partners and clients. Within Europe and Central Asia specifically, KESO has played a role in private sector development in Armenia, Azerbaijan, Bulgaria, Czech Republic, Estonia, Georgia, Hungary, Kyrgyzstan, Latvia, Lithuania, Moldova, Poland, Romania, and Russia, and of course here in Kazakhstan. So since the late 60s, or for over, uh, Kesso has been in operation for over 45 years, uh, have completed over 47,000 missions, again worldwide. And over that time, 130 missions uh, here in Kazakhstan since 1990. So sustainable growth, growth and the increase of SME competitiveness will provide the environment for greater employment generation, which is key, as our uh, colleague said earlier, especially for youth, and a more equitable distribution of wealth so as we struggle around the world with the, the gap between the have and the have not, it's critical in terms of bridging that gap. gap. In Canada, SMEs have adapted to compete effectively in national and international markets. Um, the World Economic Forum's Global Competitiveness Index uh, ranked Canada 14th out of 148 countries in 2014. In 2011, SMEs in Canada employed over 63% of the population, or 6.8 million people across the country. So a major driver of economic growth. By the nature of their size, SMEs face unique barriers to growth. Um, my colleague mentioned uh, access to capital. Um, so there's, there's, there's uh, intellectual capital, financial capital, experience and capabilities. So KESO provides opportunities to share Canadian business experience through training, coaching and mentorship, transfer of knowledge and technology to strengthen business operations. So all with the goal of leaving that capacity with our local client, clients, a sustainable model for capacity development. Our experts provide clients with senior level managerial and technical expertise, as well as knowledge of international markets, trade linkages, things like that. As I mentioned, our Canadian experts are from the public and private sector. I have this big database of highly skilled experts. Um, and you can see a little bit of a breakdown of their expertise. Very simply, 
They're experts in business, all aspects of business, from entrepreneurship support to support with expansion, marketing, finance, production and operations, HR, leadership development. The capabilities of our roster go further and include things such as community development, natural resource management, and public sector governance. All, criti all critical to support an enabling environment for SME development. So Kesso's unique value really boils down to three things. Our senior experts, our approach, and our focus on economic development. So our senior experts, a diverse, extensive roster of retired, semi-retired, senior Canadian business executives, and former public sector officials. Our approach, transfer of knowledge through skills, knowledge and skills through customized training, one-on-one -on -one mentorship, advisory services, again, for sustainable results. Our focus on economic development, again, since the late 60s, this has been the mission of Kesso, to work with clients at local, regional, and national levels to promote the ability of small businesses to generate economic activity in key growth sectors. Our senior experts have been uh, compared to consultants. However, there are important differences. The capacity building approach, uh, the fact that our mentors are not profit oriented and they're not politically oriented. So I just skipped that slide quickly and it was just an overview of our service areas. As I get more interested in my discussion, I'm going to run out of time. So I want to talk about uh, a program that Kesso implemented uh, in several Central Eastern European and Caucasus countries, including a multi-year program funded by the Canadian government that we called Countries in Transition in Armenia, Georgia, Russia, Serbia, and the Ukraine. The program goal was to support the development of market economies and to create an enabling environment for private sector development. In that program, we assisted 455 SMEs, trained more than 10,000 employees, and assisted nine government agencies to become more efficient in carrying out their mandates through improved delivery and quality of public services. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the enabling environment, uh, the public sector. I talked about uh, Kesso strengthening SMEs. Uh, Kesso also strengthens government entities and NGOs to create a well-functioning, competitive local and national environment. An example of that uh, would be the 10 years from 1996 to 2006. Um, we implemented two programs funded by the Canadian government uh, to reform the public sector, to increase economic growth, reduce poverty, uh, all through enhancing the capability of the public sector. So this was in Bolivia and Peru, and it was at a time when both countries were implementing policies to open up their economies to international trade and to promote private sector development. So I'd like to just make sure I, I talk about our most recent work here in Kazakhstan uh, in partnership with uh, Fund Damu. Um, we have had, in 2013, 30 of our experts come to work with local SMEs uh, to, again, share their experience, their expertise, transfer, transfer knowledge, and help improve their competitiveness. Um, these 30 missions were completed uh, or took place uh, throughout the 14 uh, oblasts and um, in fact another 30 are set to begin uh, in the next month. A few short examples. One, a senior Kesso expert with 32 years of experience in agriculture assisted agricultural producers in Almaty in greenhouse cultivation and eco-farming methodology. Another Kesso expert with 43 years of experience in dairy processing advised entrepreneurs in East Kazakhstan and Kostanay to update their production technologies to extend their expiration dates and reduce costs. 
a veterinarian and livestock expert with over 40 years of experience, assisted livestock farms in Almaty, South Kazakhstan with cattle breeding techniques. One last example, um, we also did an assignment um, with a small printing and media company in Taraz. They requested assistance to increase uh, their production efficiency and increase product quality. So a variety of different sectors where we can support growth of SME development. So in summary, there are opportunities for collaboration at all levels of economic activity. From strengthening the capacity of small businesses and entrepreneurs through mentorship and training, to supporting private sector institutions such as chambers of commerce and trade associations, industry associations, to develop new products and services for local businesses. And finally, by partnering with government agencies to increase institutional strength to create well-functioning, competitive local and national business environment. Thank you very much. Уэнди, спасибо большое. У меня вот э, еще раз все-таки такой вопрос, э, с которого я начинала. Э, эти люди возвращаются в Канаду, побывав здесь, в Казахстане. У них есть какие-то эмоции, ощущения, впечатления о том, каков бизнес в Казахстане. Э, какая самая какая-то особенная была оценка каких-то способностей наших казахстанских предпринимателей, которые вы услышали из уст канадских э, старших сеньоров? Sure. Um, I think two things. Uh, one was the um, that every single one of our experts who came back to Canada reported great satisfaction, both with the uh, working aspect of the assignment, but also with the just absolute delight uh, and enjoyment of the relationship they built with the um, Kazakhstan uh, a, a small business. Uh, to the point where I have my experts, uh, they phone me and tell me they want to come back. <laughs> so it really is an overwhelming commitment um, uh, to support uh, the, the people through this relationship. The second thing I would comment on and has been reinforced by this past week that I've spent uh, here in Astana, um, and that is an absolute openness and thirst for knowledge. It is um, a consistent report back again from all 30 of the missions that we did last year um, that the, um, the appetite for growth, knowledge, capacity um, is uh, it's truly inspiring and quite wonderful. Спасибо. Thank you. Let's talk specifically about emotion. Uh, what drives people when they establish uh, links, when they become friends and subsequently generating profits together. And we're lucky in this uh, session because we have uh, Annie Maki as one of our guests today, who's uh, a recognized expert in the area of emotional intelligence, uh, the art of managing people, emotional leadership. Uh, uh, a book um, was published in Russian uh, on emotional leadership. Annie McKay is uh, uh, the book is is a, is a national best bestseller. Uh, according to many newspapers. And uh, I have uh, a question in this um, connection to uh, Annie. To what extent do you think emotional intelligence uh, influences the success among young entrepreneurs? Thank you very much, Madam Chairwoman. And thank you to my colleagues who have shared wisdom today. I think emotional intelligence is essential in small and medium-sized businesses, just as it is in large businesses. I uh, spend a good deal of my life working with leaders and managers all over the world, and I also happen to be a successful entrepreneur myself. I started a company about 14 years ago, and it's still going very strong, so I know firsthand the challenges. 
But let me not talk about my own experience. Let me talk about the research that I and my colleagues have done. Let's think about what it's like. You've started a business. You've, you've got a good idea. You're the entrepreneur. You've got a great idea. Um, maybe you've got a new tech startup going. You've got a new innovation. You know there's a market. You've got a great business plan. Uh, through great organizations like DAMU and other banking organizations, you've secured some funding. You launch your business, and then three years later, you're dead. Or five years later, you're out of business, which sadly is truly the end of most small startups. Most small organizations do not succeed the first five years. And if we've got all of those things going for us, if we've got a great idea, a brilliant entrepreneur, um, good people, we've got a great business plan, and we've got money, what could possibly go wrong? And our hypothesis is that, in fact, what goes wrong is how these small and medium-sized organizations are managed and led. And for a moment, I don't want to talk about the efficiencies of management, organizing and controlling resources. I want to talk about how leaders in these organizations create a climate and a culture where everyone can be their best, absolutely everyone in the organization. And I'm sorry to say it doesn't happen so often. And it happens for a couple of reasons. One, most entrepreneurs are very achievement oriented. They have a vision and they're going for it. Anyone who gets in their way, watch out. And now this is the strength that they bring to the business, of course, but it also kills motivation. It kills innovation in anyone other than themselves. And in fact, it creates a climate of dependency where others around the entrepreneur are actually going to stop doing what needs to be done in these small businesses. The same is true for family-owned organizations. In fact, the dynamics are multiplied as the family becomes more entrenched and more, more powerful. Madam Chair, I'd like to stop there because I know you want to continue on with a few more comments from our guests, and you're free to ask me more questions as we go. Thank you, Annie. Indeed, so I fly a lot around the country, and, and uh, I, I, Daniel Goldman's book, Emotional Intellect and Business, is always in my suitcase, and it was um, a great pleasure today that um, Annie Ma McKee, one of the followers of uh, the theory, is currently with us in this room. I'd like for young people to definitely read the, all the books that are available about the emotional intelligence today and take advantage of the opportunity to ask uh, additional questions to Annie later on. I'd like to now turn to a person who among young people in Kazakhstan is um, serves as one of the ex examples of success story. As I've already uh, mentioned, uh, a lot of people ask uh, about you, about Serik Pai uh, would ask me whether I know him, I, whether I've met him. Um, he was at our, and I answered um, uh, that uh, he was at our council last year and this year as well. He was uh, declared the entrepreneur of uh, uh, the year uh, in the Russian Federation. Um, this is an award uh, created by uh, Marston Young, and so Serik Pai is uh, established a very advanced company called Armand Holding, and they're dealing with uh, working in the area of um, information technology. And to uh, one of the speakers in the previous session, uh, talked about a slightly different thing uh, about uh, migrants, uh, in, uh, immigrants uh, uh, succeeding in um, the country that they moved to, but. Uh, Serik Bai is a slightly different um, story. He, he, he achieved uh, his greatest success in Russia, in a neighboring country. And I know that you are traveling a lot now and delivering a lot of lectures about uh, the origins of uh, the success. Could you tell us about, uh, please tell us about uh, your success story, your personal success story, and your companies? And uh, also the fact that uh, you were in a different country, slightly different country, was that more of an impediment or, or an opportunity? Thank you very much. Could you pass the, uh, the pointer to me so I could uh, 
Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. I, I always travel to Kazakhstan with pleasure and share my experience because I live in Singapore uh, now in Southeast Asia where uh, the total population is 600 million people. Our office is in India, so we have to compete. As was mentioned um, uh, during this uh, panel session, competitive enterprises, the, the title competitive enterprises in a competitive environment, the government establishes all the conditions, the foundation, and we need to make our money and pay our taxes. Therefore, I'd like to go back to this. Uh, uh, the whole world, and, and, and Mr. Nazarbayev has uh, mentioned that the biggest problem, number one problem, and the main problem is poverty. And uh, to me, poverty is an indicator of uh, inadequate education. In other words, if we become educated, then we'll become successful, free, and happy. And I consider this my mission, specifically to bring the level of education among the people in Kazakhstan. If possible, you could uh, use the internet to expand it uh, throughout the world, thereby overcoming poverty. Therefore, I read my, deliver my lectures, share my knowledge, and thanks to the internet, I now deliver webinars uh, that allow you to um, get education in any remote village, in a remote um, settlement. So I'm able to share my knowledge that way. Uh, therefore, I'd like to say that last year I uh, spoke about uh, each university, in my opinion, needing to have a semester worth of uh, courses on basics of entrepreneurship. I consider this as a sort of a road map uh, that everyone who is a university student should be trained in those ground rules so they don't harm neither themselves nor uh, others. Because people who graduate, uh, regardless of uh, what their major is, uh, it, could, uh, it could be agriculture, for example, they're future farmers, or, or people who are going to be employed by a farmer. So it's very important uh, for them to also know how these processes uh, function in the business world. And, uh, and the, the, the times when someone was able to privatize an asset due to the so-called ministerial resource or due to connections they were able to privatize an asset. Now, more and more, we are seeing examples of true entrepreneurs who are truly competitive. And one of the most important things that I always mention to ensure uh, that you are competitive uh, interna internationally is your competitive advantage, which means that you need to invest the money, all the money that you've uh, made, in, not in expensive cars or um, apartments as uh, people like uh, in this part of the world, but reinvest it in your business to become even more competitive. And if Kazakhstan is, is joining WTO, we need to be competitive. We need to be ready for this uh, because Mr. Nazarbayev has established uh, all the conditions uh, through the customs union. Let's uh, practice in the customs union and so that we're ready to be competitive with WTO. Uh, I have uh, prepared a very brief presentation specifically for this because most of the people need to be role models uh, because I think role models of successful entrepreneurs such as Mr. Abramovich or um, Mr. Abramovich or uh, other similar cases, they've made their money different ways. Uh, but we're not selling commodities. We need to be competitive. We are making final products. So I think our task, the task of entrepreneurs, is to deliver lectures, to uh, keep a link with uh, uh, with, the, with the people, because uh, modern entre entrepreneurs. Um, uh, don't uh, share this information normally and only in America you can hear examples of uh, um, having successful entrepreneurs uh, who are teaching courses, doing lectures at universities based on real life stories and examples. So I think Kazakhstan needs to reform the education system and I'm ready to uh, facilitate this to help uh, to write uh, a manual uh, to facilitate this process so that there are lecturers for every region uh, who are sharing this information because it would be very difficult to develop the SME sector and entrepreneurship in general uh, without this. I'm going to talk about my company now and about myself a little bit. So please treat this as not my attempt to boast, but I want to charge all of all young people uh, with uh, this desire to uh, not be afraid to become successful and to develop 
their enterprises because uh, one of the major things that are holding people back is fear. Those who are able to overcome fear and laziness are probably going to become successful. So we'll start the presentation now. Something went wrong. It's a different presentation. A different presentation was uploaded. Um, what can you do? Anyway, briefly, uh, I was born in a village, a small village, several thousand residents. Uh, having moved to uh, the city of Kostanai, as many of you, uh, I lived in a dormitory, uh, which was often the case in the Soviet times. We shared a single room, um, me and, uh, and uh, four other people, including our parents um, and my sisters. So when people say that entrepreneurs only come from good families with good incomes, it's not true. Uh, on a previous uh, uh, person to mine in uh, the United States, a Turkish guy who went to America and became one of the leading producers of yogurts in America. Same uh, story for me. I come from a regular, simple family.